Good morning, everyone. Namaste. Namaste. This morning, uh, the subject of my talk is perseverance, and it is on the importance of perseverance and vigilance and patience. And I chose this subject um, because in these times that we're in, it can be challenging to maintain our faith and our commitment to our spiritual growth. So an extra measure of perseverance is called for. You know, sometimes when life is particularly challenging, it takes heroic courage, heroic courage to not give up, to never give up. And it's funny, I had no idea that, you know, when I chose this talk title about a month ago, that this week, the United States would land a rover on Mars named Perseverance. It was funny, I was writing my talk all day on Wednesday, and then I um, watched the evening news, and there was this footage of our Perseverance rover successfully landing on Mars after its six-month journey, six months of journeying at, uh, I think, 12, what is it, 12,000 miles an hour? Yeah, 12,000 miles an hour, uh, 300 million miles. <laughs> And then that last seven minutes of that six months journey, they called the minutes of terror while it was Mars was it was entering Mars's atmosphere, which is 2400 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. And that, you know, in that short seven minutes, it decelerated from 12,000 miles an hour to, to about two miles an hour. And I thought, wow, you know, that rover was so aptly named, you know, all of that that it went through, that was so much to accomplish, you know, and, and so when all those folks at NASA, when they showed them jumping for joy, uh, when the successful touchdown was announced, I, I felt so much joy. It was so good to, to just have a moment to celebrate our accomplishments. And what an amazing feat. And, and just to, you know, take a moment and feel like, it's amazing what we can accomplish as human beings with our God potential, with our God created intelligence. And, you know, it takes persevering, it takes having courage, and it really takes us keeping the faith and not giving up, no matter what. In pretty much all faith traditions, this quality of persevering, of not giving um, into hopelessness or laziness on our spiritual path is essential. We read in the uh, the infancy gospel of James, kind of a more uh, more um, uh, lesser known gospel. James, the gospel of James, chapter one, verse twelve. We read a really beautiful scripture. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. Because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. In this beautiful scripture, we're encouraged to persevere for, through the trials of life, that our soul grows. Our soul grows in God consciousness through those trials when we're determined to not give up, to have courage, to not lose faith. And so um, perseverance goes hand in hand with vigilance. You know, um, to be vigilant is, is a beautiful thing. It's to keep a vigil. A vigil is, is like keeping sacred watch. And so to be vigilant spiritually is to keep a sacred watch over our well-being, our states of mind, our states of emotions, our states of health. And do, doing our best to maintain and grow our well-being. So it's really the perfect time to tune up our vigilance because we're in this period of Lent. Um, last Wednesday, Lent began with Ash Wednesday. And Lent is this period of time where we keep vigil over the way we are living. And we, we intentionally choose to purify, you know, the... There's traditional um, views on Lent, and then unity kind of has a slightly different view on Lent. But it's this time of repentance, as in repenting of limitation, of limiting thoughts, of actions that are, that are not conducive to our spiritual progress. 
and uh, purifying of that as we move towards these 40 days that culminate with Easter. So vigilance and perseverance are like sisters. They're related. They work together. Gentle perseverance is meeting all that life brings with compassion and strength, with courage and optimism. And it, it, it includes keeping a vigil for our holistic well-being, for our whole well-being in all aspects. So I was thinking of an example of perseverance, and I was thinking of how we learn to walk as a toddler, you know. You know, you might not remember it, but I bet you were very determined to learn to walk, you know. We all were as babies. We, we had to work hard to get off the floor and into that standing position. And we get in that standing position and take a few steps and fall, and then, you know, take a few more steps and fall over and over and over. And until little by little, we evolve and we go from crawling to walking. Something in us, you know, when we're, we're little toddlers, knows how to persevere. It knows how to not give up, you know, as hard as it is to learn to walk. And, you know, because we are living in abnormal times, you know, and by that I mean we've, we've never lived like this before. You know, all over the planet, all of humanity, you know, people are isolating. They're not hugging. They're not congregating. And that can bring up very normal feelings, like feeling something just isn't right, something doesn't feel right, or feeling lonely, or feeling um, anxiety, and feeling fear, and feeling this inner ache. My friend was telling me yesterday, it's a longing for connection, you know, and we don't have a map for this time. We've really never done this before. And so part of our being vigilant um, is our thinking and seeing if we can shift our perceptions from pessimism to optimism and seeing if we can turn our view so that what feels like limitation we can use as opportunity. And I know you've been doing this for this almost entire past year, but it's like we're, in, I feel like we're in the last couple miles of a marathon and we're tired of this. <laughs> And I feel it, but help is on the way and hope is on the way. It's, you know, it's a time that calls and has called for deeper digging and fortifying in our perseverance and our faith and our trust in life. And also a time for applying all the teachings that we, all the wisdom teachings we've ever received to help us keep hope alive. And just like babies, learning to walk when, when, you know, we just focused on just taking a couple steps, right? That first step, that second step, it helps to manage, um, it helps to break our challenges down into manageable pieces, you know, like just living today at peace, just today being at peace. It's in AA, you know, they take, they take it one day at a time, you know, don't, don't try to think too far ahead and don't, you know, don't get too far out into the future. It's kind of like, you know, when you're climbing uh, Mount Shasta, our mountain here is 14,180 feet. And if you've ever climbed up on it, as you get up higher, you get really present. It's just that next step and that next step and the altitude is thinner. And, you know, you just focus on uh, being present with that next step. There's a, I found this beautiful um, scripture from an Af African traditional religion that reads, Life is like a hill. Mawu, the creator, made it steep and slippery. To right and left, deep waters surround it. You cannot turn back once you start to climb. You must climb with a load on your head. A man's arms will not help him, for it's a trial. The world is a place of trial. It feels that way sometimes, you know. You probably remember uh, that wonderful nursery rhyme from childhood, um, a teaching on perseverance, the song Eensy Weensy Spider. You probably even learned the, the little hand things. Let's see. I, I don't know if I can say it. I can sing it. Eensy Weensy Spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. So the eensy-weensy spider went up the spout again. 
I know it's 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 a charming, cute little nursery rhyme, but it's also an incredibly wonderful teaching on perseverance. And there's a second verse that you might not have learned um, about success after perseverance, and it goes, "Then the little spider began to weave her thread of gossamer and silk. She spun herself a bed. Round and round she went till all her work was done, and soon a magic web lay gleaming in the sun." <laughs> it's such a genius teaching for children on how to persevere. Persevere like a spider does. It's amazing the webs that they weave and the patience they put into that. And it's a teaching on not giving up when things are hard. The Jewish uh, Talmud reads, Scripture credits with performance, not him who begins a task, but him who completes it. So perseverance and vigilance and patience, these qualities are so necessary for living successfully and especially in progressing on our spiritual path. I was listening to a, a talk that Alma gave a few months ago, um, Alma the Hugging Saint, and she said, you know, I know this is a challenging time, you know, but whether we laugh or cry, the days will pass by decide whether you want to live laughing or crying. Happiness is a decision. Make the firm decision that we will remain happy and courageous regardless of the circumstances. Exchange words and messages that inspire enthusiasm and optimism. Being in this Lenten uh, season, I found a wonderful bit of guidance from Pope Francis about how we can fast from pessimism and be filled instead with optimism, feast on optimism. So let me read you uh, this passage that he wrote. It's so beautiful. It's perfect guidance. Do you want to fast this Lent? Fast from hurting words and say kind words. Fast from sadness and be filled with gratitude. Fast from anger and be filled with patience. Fast from pessimism and be filled with hope. Fast from worries and have trust in God. Fast from complaints. Com contemplate simplicity. Fast from pressures and be prayerful. Fast from bitterness. Fill your hearts with joy. Fast from selfishness and be compassionate. Fast from grudges and be reconciled. Fast from words. Be silent and listen. He's giving perfect guidance on how to be vigilant, how to keep a vigil of our state of being so that we can express more of our Christ nature. I think, Allison, I think it was your post that, uh, that I just love this beautiful, beautiful bit of teaching and guidance from Pope Francis. I found another quote that said, we can think of Lent as a pressing call to vigilance against the snares of error thinking. I like that. But I, I really um, especially relate to fasting from pessimism and being filled with hope and fasting from worries and having trust in spirit because my dear friend left this world on Tuesday and, um, you know, he left very sad. And I, I've just been communing with his soul. I wrote him a song and I've been singing to it and singing it to him and I've been feeling him actually receiving that support. And, you know, just processing my feelings of grief, you know. And I, you know, I wished I could have done more to help him. You know, my song is about that. I wish I, I could have told you one more time how beautiful you are. Wish I could have sung you one more song and had you sing along. And it's really part of why I chose to speak today on perseverance and on keeping our hope and faith alive. You know, sometimes we need a little more help. We need a reminder that we're not alone, you know, that we have friends on the path. So I just want to say, if you feel hopeless, please reach out. Call me. Or call your friends. Call for counseling. Tell someone you need help, okay? We cannot make it through life by ourselves, you know? We are all dependent on one another, and there is no shame, no shame at all in that. It's like, you know, we couldn't have even eaten our breakfast today uh, without 
lots of others that brought us that food. We couldn't be on Zoom without other people right now making sure that the electricity's on and the technology's working. We couldn't have this church, our unity of Orville, without so many people's support. So we, we need each other. That's how we're made. You know, and sometimes we need to reach out and say, I'm struggling. I'm feeling despair. You know, I need help to feel strong and courageous again. That's okay. That's okay. There's my heart. <laughs> there's, whew, there's a Buddhist scripture uh, from the Dhammapada that reads, If one holds oneself dear, one should protect oneself well. During every one of the, the three watches, the wise man should keep vigil. We should keep vigilant. We should keep vigilance over our well-being and reach out when we need to fortify it. Another way that um, I look at keeping vigilant in the world is it's like we're walking through a world where a lot of humanity is asleep. They're sleeping. And they don't really know that there is this spiritual journey. You know, they're, they're, they're all about the sense world and the physical world. And they just want to find, you know, a little happiness, try to avoid suffering, and then they die. And that's what they think life is. They don't know there's a greater destiny for themselves yet. You know, they're at a younger stage of evolution. So they're sleeping. And our job is to not fall asleep and not judge them for that, right? You know, there are buds on the rose bush that are tight and some are, are wide open. But if you're listening to this talk, you're waking up. You're in this, this process of evolution. You're, you're, you're very consciously on the path. You know there's a noble purpose to your life, and that is to awaken to your divine nature fully, more fully, every day. So even if everyone around you seems to be asleep, you have to keep a vigil. We have to keep a vigil and not get sleepy. And if we get sleepy, which we will, <laughs> then get back on track, get some fresh air, so to speak, metaphorically. And, and we do that by revisiting our spiritual practices. The Dhammapada quote goes on to say, heedful among the heedless, wide awake amongst the slumbering. The wise man advances as does a swift horse, leaving the weak jade behind. The weak jade, jade means broken down, worn out horse. It's old, old English. The wise man advances, as does the swift horse. This reminds me of um, somebody I've been watching the videos of this week that is so inspiring. Someone who has overcome tremendous obstacles and who's an incredible example of perseverance in our world today. There's this man, you may have seen videos of him or heard him. His name is Nick Viochik. I hope I'm saying that right. It sounds Czechoslovakian, Viochik. Nick Viochik, and he was born in Australia. He's got that charming Australian accent. But he was born with this disease called Tetra Amelia syndrome. And it's a rare disease that is characterized by the absence of all four limbs. He doesn't have arms or legs. He does have uh, most of a foot, though, which allows him amazing mobility. But he was born with a really sharp mind and a really strong spirit which he definitely needed because his childhood was hard. You know, he was bullied in school incessantly. And he even wanted, talked about wanting to commit suicide at 10 years old by drowning himself in the bathtub. And he wondered, you know, at that time, is, is there any purpose to my life other than pain and just this constant humiliation? But he eventually came to terms with his differently abled body. I love to call, call it that, differently abled. And when he was about 17, there was a janitor at, at his school that said, you have something to share with others that can help them. You're going to be a speaker. And um, that was huge for him just to hear that. And so he started his first speaking engagement was speaking to six people. And he realized that he wasn't alone in struggling, that everyone struggles. And he became determined to help others find hope and find meaning in their lives. And now he, he inspires millions. He especially loves working with teens, which is, is incredible. His videos are so inspiring. 
And he talks so much about this, this constant battle with self-acceptance and grief. He talks about how he reached a turning point in his life uh, when his mother showed him an article of a man that was still happy, even though he had a disability. And so he realized his life could have purpose in helping others persevere and not give up. And when you watch him, he not only survives, but he thrives and he's funny. He has, he has such a sense of humor. He, he actually seems like he just gets such a kick out of, you know, being in the body that he's in. He tells stories about how people respond to him when they see him. And he says, especially kids, you know, they're not, they're not subtle. And they, they come up to him and they say, what happened? And he responds, cigarettes, don't ever smoke. <laughs> He says, no arms, no legs, no worries, you know, and when you watch him, you know, you see that he's really learned to use the body he has. It's amazing and inspiring. He kicks soccer balls, you know, sky high. He surfs, he swims, he has a boat he tools around in, he drives. He doesn't accept limitations. And he says his life went from a life without limbs to a life without limits. I love that. I think that's the title of his book, Life Without Limits. So I recommend his book. I'm going to order it. I've just been reading excerpts, excerpts online. But I want to just share with you um, the core things that he describes about fortifying, how we fortify our hope. He says we do it through a strong sense of purpose. We have to have meaning and purpose in life. We do it through faith in infinite possibilities through love and self-acceptance, through al attitude with altitude. I love that. Have an attitude with altitude. <laughs> through willingness to change, through an ability to assess risks and laugh at life, and with a mission to serve others first, through seva, selfless service. He said, faith, belief, and conviction are great. But your life is measured by the actions you take based on them. His father uh, told him, you are a gift, just, just differently packaged. And I thought about that. You know, we, we all have unique packaging. You know, we all have our foibles and ways that we might feel like we're not enough or lacking. We, we can just think of it as differently packaged, right? And that we, we can use his example, right, to turn our challenges into opportunities. So in closing, um, I hope this, this talk has fortified your determination to persevere and to vigilantly cultivate what supports optimism, hope, and willingness to stay on the path of your own spiritual unfoldment. May we all keep the open line to the divine. And may we use the compost of life to grow the flowers of our heart and soul. Thank you all. God bless you. Love you all.